Um, so, as Christina said, today I'm going to talk about the labor market integration of immigrants um, and uh, refugees to Sweden. And I will also present an um, empirical study on um, the role of intermarriage in the labor market integration of um, immigrants to Sweden. But first, I will present an overview of uh, the latest migration uh, facts and figures and some um, um, policy uh, changes in Sweden that uh, may have affected um, the employment and um, socioeconomic uh, outcomes of um, immigrants and refugees. <clears throat> Let's look at some uh, numbers first. Um, this graph here shows the first-time residence permits um, in, uh, in Sweden. And I focused on economic immigrants, family members, and refugees. Um, and as you know, the um, immigration policies in, in Sweden are based on humanitarian principles. And this is reflected in the number of um, immigrants that they receive every year in each category. Um, the last few years also reflect the um, Syrian refugees arrivals. and. Um, but as you can see, the number of refugees has, uh, have a difference, ha big differences depending on the year, and it's not a, a continuum increase. And these differences uh, reflect also conflicts in immigrant origin countries like uh, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, previously in the 90s, um, former Yugoslavian countries. In the second graph, I'm showing the percentage of resett resettled refugees uh, out of all the refugees received in, uh, accepted in Sweden. And making a distinction of resettled refugees versus asylum seekers is important because uh, there are policy differences that target these two groups and that can also affect their integration in the labor market. And uh, what, are, what are these main differences? Um, resettled refugees are placed by the migration board in municipalities where they also attend integration courses. So they cannot choose where they want to live. And they are of, often placed in smaller towns with le less economic opportunities because cities are already crowded. So they do try to um, disperse them a little bit. Um, on the contrary, since 1994, asylum seekers can choose whether they want to live with friends and relatives if they have any in the country while they, their application is uh, considered. And about 50% of them choose to live with friends and, and relatives, or they have the opportunity to, to live with them. This, was not the, uh, this wasn't the case before 1994. Um, and there is, um, um, there is some research done on the, on the effect of the policy change, change in 1994. And according to this, um, to this policy, the, um, uh, sorry, according to this um, piece of research, the policy change had a positive effect on the labor market integration of, uh, of refugees, asylum seekers. And also after their application, if their application is accepted, they can actually choose where they want to live and attend their integration courses. So just a note on um, these integration courses. In Sweden, like in many other immigrant and refugee receiving countries, um, refugees are allowed to um, enroll these uh, inter introduction courses or civic integration courses. In Sweden, they are not compulsory, but um, the a monthly allowance that they receive is subject to participation in, in this program. They started in 1985 when, again, there was a policy change. Um, and uh, according to this change, the migration board and municipalities took responsibility for the integration of refugees were, um, and immigrants, whereas before it was the, um, the labor board who was responsible for that. These uh, courses consist on uh, language training, civic and labor market orientation and they are for refugees and their reunited families. And, and they can last for up to 24 months. 
Again, there was another policy shift in 2010, and the responsibility uh, of this program uh, was uh, given to the Swedish Public Employment Agency at the state level. So they went back to the pre-1985 um, situation, and they did that because they saw that um, the labor market integration of refugees was uh, being very slow. So in order to um, promote a faster integration, they allocated more resources and they focused on employment. Now the results of this policy change are still uncertain. It's too early to say um, if, um, if it has had a positive effect or not. But again, there is another um, paper that looked at the policy change in uh, 1985 when um, the responsibility for integration of immigrants was given to the Migration Board when before it was again the Employment Agency. And according to this paper, in the long run, refugees' um, average income decreased by 20, 25%. So it was, according to that paper, it was not a, a positive uh, shift. Now, what does the literature, sh uh, literature say about uh, immigrants' labor market participation in Sweden and other parts of the world? Well, in general, it, there is a consensus that immigrants have lower employment rates and income uh, than native Swedes. And um, scholars explain this by the lower human capital um, attributes of immigrants, also Swedish immigration policies and discrimination. There's also a consensus that refugees have lower employment rates and job, job income than uh, other immigrants. And they explain this by the same reasons, but there is also some additional challenges when it comes to refugees. For example, there is higher difficulties in, um, in um, recognizing their foreign credentials. They also have some physical and mental um, issues, etc. And finally, studies also show that resettled refugees have lower employment rates than asylum seekers. And they explain this mostly by uh, Swedish integration and set, uh, settlement policies that I just referred to. So um, again, asylum seekers can choose where they want to live, uh, whereas resettled refugees uh, are not allowed to do that. Um, and they also, um, in relation to these um, dispersion policies, they also talk about the social puppet, uh, capital. So those who live with friends and relatives, um, their acculturation process in the country is supposed to be faster because they already have uh, some references and people who can tell them how to uh, behave in a job interview. They may help them with language issues, etc. Other factors that have been mentioned in the literature <coughs> Excuse me. That increased the probability of employment for both groups are human capital, social demographics, like younger people, it's easier for them to get um, a job. Again, employment rates for uh, men are higher. And um, for um, people who have children, actually, if it's women, then they have lower employment rates. If it's men, um, having children increases their employment rates. And finally, people who live in uh, Stockholm, uh, sorry, refugees who live in, in Stockholm have higher employment rates as opposed to the rest of Sweden. And they explain this because the service sector is uh, bigger in Stockholm as compared to other countries. Finally, um, immigrants from Vietnam and Bosnia and Herzegovina are, are um, apparently doing better than other immigrants. So, as I said, I will today I will also present um, an empirical study that I conducted with my uh, co-author uh, Peter Beverlander, and we looked at the role of intermarriage in the labor market integration of immigrants. So there are two main hypo hypotheses um, on this um, field, and one is that um, well, they all scholars agree that intermarried immigrants are doing better than non-intermarried immigrants in the labor market. And when I say intermarried, I am referring to intermarriage with native Swedes in this case. And when I say intramarried, then it will be immigrants married to other immigrants. It doesn't matter if they are from the same country or not. So they all agree that yes, intermarried immigrants are doing better, but um, they do not agree on the reasons behind this uh, 
and better performance. So some of them say that uh, there is an intermarriage premium hypothesis. According to this, again, the um, social networks um, and acculturation process of uh, intermarried immigrants would be easier, uh, faster, because they have somebody who can uh, advise them on several aspects related to not only the labor market, but again, language training, etc. And then there is another group of scholars who claim that um, intermarried immigrants, uh, yes, they have better labor market outcomes, but this is, uh, this is basically because they were already doing better when they were single, so they are basically self-selected. And they may have certain characteristics that makes them um, more attractive both in the labor market and let's call it marriage market. So we wanted to test these two hypotheses and we wanted to see whether um, in Sweden, intermarried immigrants uh, were actually doing better than intermarried immigrants and, and why. If this was because of um, uh, there is an intermarriage premium or because they were self-selected. Self so we looked at employment rates and job income before and after marriage with a 10-year ten, ten uh, gap. And we looked at three groups, uh, immigrants married to natives, immigrants married to other immigrants, and natives married to natives. And we asked these three questions. Are the differences in employment and job income between intermarried and intramarried immigrants? And how can we explain this? And finally, we also asked whether there were differences by type of migration, and we looked into labor migrants, family migrants, and uh, refugees. We used Swedish uh, individual register data from 1997 and 2007. And this data comprises uh, the whole population of Sweden. We first selected um, married and cohabiting people in the 2007 data. And then we, we identified the same people in the 1997 data. But only, we only selected those who were single in 97 in order to see if they were actually doing better or not when they were, um, when they were not married to their native or immigrant partners. So uh, we selected 25 to 60 year old individuals and 11% of our final sample were immigrants. 80% of them were intramarried with Swedes. 13% were intermarried with immigrants, and 6% were intramarried immigrants. So we looked at employment, job income, and also change in employment and income growth between those two years, 1997 and 2007. And our explanatory variables include human capital, social demographic, migration-related variables, and also environmental context-related variables. So we use different regressions to see um, whether being intermarried versus inter intramarried uh, had an effect on immigrants' employment and job income, and we have different models for men and women. We also run additional tests in order to see, to analyze the reasons behind these potential differences. So what did we find? As expected, we found that the probability of being employed and their job income are lower for immigrants than for natives, with the exception of immigrants from higher um, human uh, inequality adjusted human development index. But there is only two countries that have um, higher index than Sweden, and these are Norway and Australia. But it is interesting to see that actually um, it's um, not all immigrants can be put in the same um, group, but some of them are actually doing better than natives. And the same is true for immigrants. So intermarried immigrants uh, were doing better than uh, intramarried immigrants. And these findings were confirmed for men and women, with the exception of intramarried women. But uh, this is also uh, not surprising because since the household income is lower for in immigrant house households, so often immigrant need to women uh, work uh, longer hours than native women. A number of hours work is something that we could not control for. 
Um, labor migrants are also likely to perform better than other type of migrants, as expected. Another minor findings uh, are that male immigrants and naturalized immigrants are likely to perform better than they, they, their counterparts. So, um, are these differences be, uh, due to selection, or the, is there an intermarriage premium? The first, um, the first, sorry, the first table here shows the um, employment rates of single individuals who were later going to be intermarried, sorry, here, versus intramarried. And as you can see, 70% of to-be intermarried single immigrants were already employed in 1997, and this number was only 41% for those who were going to marry other immigrants later. So we can see that there is some self-selection going on here. For refugees, we found the opposite. Only 29% of those who were going to be married to uh, natives were working, whereas the number was higher for... We selected those who were 25 to 60 year old. Yes. Um, this table shows the um, mean income in differences in mean income in 1997 again for single immigrants who were later going to be either intermarried or intramarried and again as you can see the, the number is higher for uh, those who were going to marry Swedish born people than for their counterparts but not for refugees for refugees those who were going to be married we, uh, two natives uh, had a lower income, and this is a bit surprising. This table is a little bit more complicated, but um, it shows the mobility in employment um, situation between 1997 and 2007. And we have four categories. Those, sorry, <laughs> the first one shows um, upward mobility, so from non-employment non to employment. The second one shows uh, the percentage of those who remained employed. The fourth one shows the number of those who stayed out, out of employment. And the last uh, row shows uh, the number of those who lost uh, their employment. So the numbers are slightly more fav favorable for intermarried immigrants, and the differences are significant, but but the differences are not so vis visible, actually. Interestingly, it is more obvious for refugees. So there was um, higher mobility in employment for refugees than for the rest of immigrants. And the last, uh, the two, last two tables shows the um, income growth of intramarried versus in intermarried immigrants between 1997, when they were single, and 2007. And as you can see, uh, for immigrants in general, intermarried immigrants had a bigger growth. But re for refugees, it's almost non -sig not significant. It's actually statistically not significant. So to conclude, I will um, sum up by saying that intermarried immigrants are more likely to be employed and earn more than the intermarried ones, even when they were single. So the selection hypothesis is supported, but it is rejected for refugees. They were actually doing worse uh, when they were single than those who were going to be intramarried. Their employment status and income improved significantly after marriage relative to intram intramarried immigrants. Excuse me. So the intermarriage premium hypothesis is also supported for immigrants in general, but only uh, on employment for refugees. Finally, we found that immigrants from less wealthier countries than Sweden are not doing as well as natives, like other studies have said before. And refugees are the most disadvantaged, disadvantaged group, especially resettled refugees. And they, um, the literature has explained this by settlement policies, self-selection, and social capital. 
And our empirical study on intermarriage also supports this previous hypothesis. Thank you.